Ask yourself the question, why is your need not provided for? Is it an issue of sowing? Have you been sowing? Have you been faithfully bringing your tithes, paying your tithes to the Lord? Your tithes is not to men. Your tithes is unto the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 7, we are tithing to the one who lives forever, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it a matter of sowing? Are there blockages that hinders God answering your prayer about provision. Blockages like relational conflicts, you're holding tight to the offense. You're holding tight to a disappointment. There is a blockage. God wants to answer our prayer, but the prayer is not answered because there is a blockage. Is it about diligence? Because the Bible says, does God know our needs? Yes, God knows our needs. Does He want to provide for us? Yes, but how does He provide for us? Faith. Hebrews 11.6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how do we please God? We must diligently seek Him.
I was a second gen Christian and I didn't truly believe in God. I was very far away from God. It led to me finding very little meaning in my existence and purpose in life every day. As I submitted to Him, He opened my eyes to many things like His love and care for me. That was when I realized that I have someone who watches over me all the time. When I was 15, I was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer, but God remained faithful and provided everything that me and my family needed. But the real transformation really happens at the start of my career. I was very lost and I didn't know what to do, but God was very clear and given me uh, the right people to show me the direction of where I'm supposed to be. I was going through a career change then and I needed to take this exam. Unfortunately, the first time round, I did not pass one paper. And the second time round, I did not pass it again. I was relying on my own efforts. For the third and final round that I was allowed to take this exam, I felt like I needed God to help me. And God did answer my prayer. And with that, I know that our God is real. Now, with new hope found in Christ, I can live every day with meaning. Knowing that there is someone out there who is planning my future so perfectly and meticulously was an amazing realization for me. Now I have someone to live for. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Good afternoon. Okay, let's try that again. Good afternoon, everybody. One more time. Good afternoon. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to our church afternoon service. If you're watching online, welcome. Uh, if you're here in our church because your friend asked you to come, welcome. If you're here by mistake, you thought you were going some other place, we welcome you anyway. But welcome to Bethesda Bedot Tampanese Church, our family church, our home church. Uh, we want to just welcome you. Indeed, if you are here for the first time, just this trying finding out what's what the world's going on. This is how we do church as a community every weekend. But we welcome you. Just a few announcements before we enter in time of celebration. The first announcement is this: in two weeks' time, it will be our newcomers fellowship. Who's this for? Newcomers. If you're if you've just joined us in the past year and you've never come for any of our newcomers fellowship. Can I invite you to, to join us? How you can sign up at a QR code um, up on screen or at the back of the seat in front of you. Just scan the QR code there for announcements and there'll be a link for you to join. If you've been coming for every Newcomers Fellowship, uh, this one, don't, don't come. Okay, I know there's food provided free of charge, uh, but this one, Newcomers, why? Because this will be a time for you to know what BBTC is about. You get a chance to meet our pastors, our senior pastor, and even as we share about our ministry, share about our vision, this is a time for you to find out, okay, this is perhaps a church that I would like to make my, my home. Second announcement is this. Our MDT, which is our mature, Maturing Disciple, Disciple Track, will commence on 18th of April, this Thursday. If you have attended the basic training, the newcomers training, and you, this, what, that's what we call milk. Now it's time for some solid meat. Sign up for our MDT or Maturing Disciple Track. Why? Because this is time where we equip you with skills to identify what, what are my giftings? How can I serve the Lord? It's no longer how do I know I'm saved? We move on to mature, uh, being a mature believer in Christ. So please sign up for that. And our third announcement, Autism Awareness. Maybe our family, our loved ones, you know someone who is on the autism spectrum. Remember, people with autism are different, but they are no less. They are just as important to the kingdom of God and God loves them just like He loves us. So if you have someone uh, in a family, maybe in a ministry that you're serving or helping, come when we have our uh, Dr. Jeremy Tang, you see Dr. Our clinical psychologist, Jeremy Tang, to share on how we can be equipped to support someone with autism. Can? 
uh, if you are volunteering some ministry, whether it's children ministry, some young adult or adult ministry, and you know there's someone there who is on the spectrum, come and get equipped. I think all of us will be blessed because of this uh, training. Amen? Let's just stand to our feet. Even as we heard announcements, let's just quieten our hearts, put everything aside, all the hustling and bustling downstairs, what's going on, just put it aside and let's just spend the next few moments just in tune with what God wants to say. Father, we welcome you. We, your church, welcome you. And we declare you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And even as we sing, even as we clap our hands, even as we declare out loud the praises of your name, we ask that your Spirit will stir in us. Stir in us that faith that will arise, a confidence that comes not from our flesh, but our trust in Jesus Christ. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move mightily here. Let this be a service that is different, not another Sunday, Saturday or Sunday service, but a Sunday service that we have God encounters, divine downloads. Move of the Holy Spirit stirring in our hearts, such a, a, a move, Lord, a stirring that will come faith, that will trust in you for greater things. We welcome you, Lord. Anything that is a distraction, all our cares, all our burdens, we lay it aside. We lay it aside. Put it down at the foot of the cross. We surrender ourselves. And we say, come Lord Jesus, come. Be the Lord of our service. Be the Lord of our lives. Right now, this moment, in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's welcome the Lord, shall we? Let's give Him a rousing clap. Thank you, Lord. And as we welcome the Lord, shall we welcome one another? If you could turn around. For those of you at home, you can turn around and look at each other too and just welcome one another. Come on. Family of God in this place. Make sure no one's left out, okay? Don't pay say, yeah? Yeah. Welcome one another. It's exciting weekend because it's, I think it's ministry day ongoing. So please, go to the booths later. And uh, we have publicity right on stage. Worship team, you'd like to join? Please, please come. <laughs> join us. <laughs> and so once again, we're here to worship our Lord. And uh, let's sing this very familiar song. And let's welcome our God. For He is real and He's uh, here with us, amongst us, this very afternoon. Here we go. Oh Lord my God When I am awesome wonder Consider all The words thy hands have made I see the stars I hear And I hear the rolling thunder Thy thoughts throughout The universe displays Then sings, then sings my soul
with me, come on. Thank you, Lord. I want to scream it out and from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your mercy never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And we sing. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good. Good to me. And no one comes anywhere close to you The earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth And in my darkest night you shine as bright as day Your love amazes me And I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me with a cry of praise and my heart will
give you a moment bask in his presence talk to the Lord for he is here it's not just a concert or a performance the Lord is here just close your eyes and talk to your king Yes, Lord, this afternoon we come as your sons and your daughters and as the body of Christ. Lord, as we have spoken, as we have sung, how great are you, Lord. Lord, open our eyes to see and our ears to hear how great you are. That, Lord, with your word, creation came to be. How powerful you are. And that same God, who parted the Red Sea, who parted the oceans for Moses and Israel. You are the same God whom we serve. And so this morning, so this afternoon, we give you praise. The same great God is our God. And we look to you, we put our trust in you. Be magnified, O Lord. Be magnified, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No. 
the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock, oh I'm standing on your faithfulness And on your faithfulness I'm calling on the God of Mary Whose favor rests upon the Lord
creation cries Holy, you are lifted high Holy, holy forever If you've been forgiven If you've been redeemed Sing the song forever to the Lamb If you walk in freedom If you bear His name Sing the song forever to the Lamb Your name Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest Your name Stands above them all All thrones and dominions All powers and positions Your name Stands above them all And the angels cry Holy All creation cry Christ, Holy One. Father, we worship You. We worship You today. We thank You so much that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that He is Lord. We thank You that today, in the name of Jesus, sickness will have to go. In the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over all the enemy has against us and we take it and we trust it in Jesus' name. 
Today we know, Lord, because of Jesus Christ, we are sons and daughters, victorious because of what Christ has done. We lift you up. We lift you up, O oh Lord, because there is no one like you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone declare it. Amen. Amen. Before you see them, tell them, person next to you, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are a believer today, will you just lift up the communion elements? Partaking of the communion is a sacred and holy moment for Christians. If you're not a believer, uh, we encourage, we ask you to just skip this. But if you peel off the first layer and take off the bread, let's hold the bread in our hands. Jesus said eat of this in remembrance of me and that's the significance for us because sometimes we just come and just do this as a ritual right but today let's just re make the recommitment to our Lord and say thank you Jesus for this is your body let's, let's pray together Jesus we thank you so much for your body that was broken for us that was pierced for all our transgressions and today even as we eat of this bread we remember you in Jesus When you're done, will you peel off the next layer? Let's lift up the cup and let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed for our sins. Indeed, by your stripes, Lord, we are healed today. And even as we drink of your precious, this precious cup, we remember all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just drink. Another sacred thing that we do as a church, besides taking of the Lord's Supper, is the giving of our tithes and offering. Tithes meaning 10%. Uh, thank you for always being a generous giver. Keep giving unto the Lord. Why? Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. But let's just pray first. Lord, we thank you that everything we have, our income, our salary, everything we have comes from you. And even as we give it unto you, back unto you, Lord, we, use, we ask that you use it for the extension of your kingdom, for the glory of your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. There are different ways that you can give, by pay now, bank transfer, or checks, or when you leave the hall, there are little boxes there that you can put your cash into the box. But thank you. Once again, welcome to BBTC. Look at the person beside you. Give them a big smile. If you don't know them, will you introduce yourself and say, Welcome! If you're here for the first time, like we said at the beginning, if you're here for the first time, we welcome you. If you do not have a home church and you're still cruising around, uh, just visiting, we welcome you here. If you are here just visiting but you have a home church, please continue to serve and support your home church. But if you're here as a newcomer, we want to give you a special gift. So at the end of the service, at the back of the hall, there is a lighted booth which says newcomers. Please proceed to the booth over there and get your newcomers gift. If you are seated up there in the gallery and you're new, uh, please come down after service and also get a, a, a gift from us. Today, if you notice when you came in through the Hallelujah Quadrant, if you're new again, that's the foyer of our church, what we call HQ. You would have seen lots of things, almost like a carnival-like atmosphere. Why? Because today is what we call Ministry Open House Day. Amen! Hallelujah! Means all of you clapping means you're serving in some capacity already, right? No, okay, never mind. <laughs> Our church operates not because you see 20 people here. It's because every week hundreds of volunteers serve the Lord with the different, in the different ministries. And that's how our church, because these are the people that you often don't see. How do you, for me, when you bring children, how, how do you know your children are okay? You have tens upon tens, 50, 60, 70 volunteers just every week serving faithfully unto the Lord for our children. In the midweek, we have services, gatherings, all run by volunteers. So today, we have what we call a, a ministry open house. If you've been in church long enough and you are not serving in any capacity, today is the day that you sign up. Can you do that? Volunteer. Why? Because you have gifts. Just like the body of Christ, there are many gifts 
If you don't serve, uh, sometimes it's very quite tiring to be doing the same thing every week. And when we have a, a bigger team, it just helps the load for all our volunteers. So today, when you go down, pick up a card, and then you, there'll be a little uh, trail for you to follow to check out the different ministries. And not only that, after you get five stamps, you get this special limited edition collar pin like the one I have now, okay? Limited edition, huh? but the condition is you must support, uh, support at least five of the different ministries. Don't just go there, stamp, stamp, stamp for the collar pin. Okay? And they are limited edition, but go there and at the end of the day, I pray and we pray that you will say, okay, I'm going to serve in this. If you like children, serve in the KFC. If you, like, if you don't like children, but you like elderly, serve in the elderly. If you say week, weekends, I'm very busy, serve during midweek. There's always something for you. If you really don't know, by the time you end today's, uh, as you walk through the HQ, I'm quite sure you'll find something that you can serve. Can? Can? Everyone? How many of you uh, say, no problem? Uh, no problem? Wave your hand, no problem? Hallelujah, I see your hand. Thank you for serving unto the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have our congregational prayer. Uh, shall we all stand? We have to be, uh, the next few weeks, we will be going through the book of Hebrews and the three areas on faith, uh, fixing our eyes and ultimately living our faith, lives out in faith to, to bless the uh, world around us. Just in your twos or threes or just by yourself, will you just take the moment, just pray for one another. That it will not just be prayers of just words, but faith that will arise when, when we pray for one another. Can we do that? Let's spend the next minute you know, doing so. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word says without faith it's impossible to please God. Today we want to please you. And Lord, even as we talk about faith, I pray that we pray that our church will be a church that walks in faith. We'll see things happen supernaturally because of the faith in you. We'll see lives transform, change, touch, heal, minister because of that faith in Christ alone. We ask our church to be a church of faith strong faith, bold and courageous faith to believe in the supernatural. Lord, even as we pray for one another, let this week be one that we, indeed, our lives will be used for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And let's just read the scripture together for today's scripture meditation found in Hebrews 11, 1 to 2. 1, 2, go. Hebrews 11, 1 to 2. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it, the man of old gained approval. And 11, 1 to 2. And here to help unpack the truth for us is none other than our senior pastor. Put a smile on your face and welcome. Thank you, Pastor Gary. Faith defined. Let me start by sharing with you that an old pastor went up to heaven and caught three surprises. And surprise number one. Anybody on guess? Surprise number one, all right? Those that he thought could make it, didn't make it. The, the nice Christian he met in church, the good Bible teacher that he knew, the nice auntie in church, they didn't make it to heaven. Surprise number one. Surprise number two. Those he thought could not make it, make it. His enemies, the people that he doesn't like, right? the, the, the terrible bosses, they made it to heaven. And surprise number three. Surprise number three, hang on, I made it. <laughs> the question for all of us today is, would you know if you can make it to heaven? Right? Or would you be surprised by those who made it? And for those of us who are surprised, it's because we may not really understand what it does it mean to have faith in Jesus. And that's why today we want to revisit Hebrew chapter 11 again. To rediscover for ourselves what is faith. Before I go further, can we all pray? Can we all look to God together? And ask the Holy Spirit to come and unpack the word for us. Lord, we thank you for your sacred scripture. At this very moment, even as we unpack your word, 
We pray for the ministry of your Spirit to release ministry among us. Use your word, Lord, to encourage our hearts and build faith in all of us. As we commit this time to you, hide thy servant behind the cross and let your word come forth in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, why, why are we revisiting the book of Hebrews? Uh, again, I want to model for all of us how to read the Word of God for ourselves. And also because uh, we started the book series last year. And last year, we ended on chapter 11. And therefore, this year, we must complete the book. All right? Otherwise, they say, hanging there, you know, don't know when it will end. So this, from this week until the first week of June, we will be covering chapter 11, 12, and 13. It's all about faith. Now, in between this uh, period, there will be two weekends that we have open topic where Pastor Daniel Fu and Pastor Don Wong will come and share what's on their hearts. And interestingly, both of them are Hainanists. <laughs> but today, we will, we will revisit chapter 11 again. And uh, the next five sermons, we will cover chapter 12 and 13. All right? What is faith? All right, chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Faith or the heroes of faith. Now, how do I know that? So allow me to show you the full 40 verses in one slide. Don't be frightened by it, Ken. Rest of the yesterday when I practiced it, the, the visualizer was shocked. Are you ready? It looks something like that. <laughs> and you promised me you will not be shocked. Okay, now, when you come to Bible reading or Bible study, one very good habit for all of us is to learn to highlight repeated words. And you will discover some words are repeated many times. Let me show you. Can you see? Try and squeeze your eyes and see, okay? Okay, you probably see the word faith or faithful. Repeated how many times? 26 times. Just in this chapter alone, it's repeated 26 times. The word faith or faithful is used in the whole book of Hebrews in total, 36 times. But just in chapter 11 alone, 26 times. Faith is certainly the subject of this very chapter itself. And not only that, if you will study further, you discover that in, within this chapter alone, 15 individuals were highlighted in this book, in this chapter. All right, the word by faith so and so is repeated 19 times. Almost once in every two verses, you, you bump into the phrase, by faith so and so. So therefore, you can see that chapter 11 is really about people. People who model faith to us. Heroes of faith, as we call them. Now, faith is a currency of heaven. All right, it, it, faith opens the door of God's blessing into our lives. The Bible tells us the just shall live by faith. And therefore, all of us must learn to live by faith. I'll go quickly from verse 1 to verse uh, 29, just as a recap all right, about some of these individuals and how they live up by faith. And then I'll zoom in on verse 30 to verse 40. These 11 verses are oftentimes skipped by preachers. And today we will zoom in on the last 11 verses, okay? Chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Can we all read together? And let the Word of God get into our system. Ready? 1, 2, 3. Now faith is the assurance of the things hoped for, the conviction of things not sin. For by it, the man of all gained approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God, so that what is sin was not made out of things which are visible. I mean, the Lord bless the public reading of His Word. Verse 1 to 3, straight away, define for us what faith is. What is faith? All right, verse 1 tells us, all right, faith is believing in the promises of God and seeing the invisible come to pass. Verse 2 tells us that faith is the pathway for us to gain approval from God. You cannot be approved by the works we do, but we are approved by the faith we have in Him. Verse 3 basically shares with us that the world is made by the Word, all right? And not through evolution. It's the Word of God that brought forth the worlds that we are in. It is important for us to know, faith is not simply 
about believing in the impossible. Faith is believing in the impossible that God has promised. Now, there's a clear distinction here because believing in the impossible, okay, it's more than believing in the impossible because believing in the impossible can be just presumptuousness and not faith. Our faith is in the Word of God. And then from verse 4 onwards, right up to verse 29, the writer of Hebrews begin to unpack for us the lives, the people who live out their faith. All right? So it is very much the way the writer of Hebrews explained faith. He started by giving us a definition, verse 1 to 3, verse 4, all the way to verse 29. He, he revealed to us men of God, women of God who live out faith for us to emulate. So allow me to quickly go through these verses for us. All right, so you can see three different kind of uh, demonstration from the pre-Abrahamic family to the Abrahamic family to the post-Abrahamic family. All right, the first three, Abel, Enoch, and Noah. How do they live out their faith? Abel show us how you give matters. Enoch show us how you walk with God matters. And Noah show us how you work matters. All this must be done in faith. Exactly, all right? How you give, you must give by faith. How you walk, you must walk by faith. And how you work, you must work by faith. And so you can see that faith is very much anchored in their lives. Then you look at the Abrahamic family. Abraham and all his children. You can see that how they walk as God directs, wait as God's desire, and finally worship as God determines. All this must be done in faith. And then we come to Moses. All right? Moses shows us that his faith is demonstrated in the choices he made. All right? He has chosen the testimony of God more than the title of, of man. What was his title? Anybody know the title given in Hebrew chapter 11? The sons of Pharaoh's daughter. All right? English translated to Prince of Egypt. But actually, Prince of Egypt is not very precise. He's the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. That itself is a title. But uh, sometimes when you read it, you just skip it, okay? So you can see that Moses, the faith in Moses is demonstrated by the choices he made. He, he has chosen the testimony of God more than the title of man. He has chosen to live in wilderness more than the wonderland of Egypt. Faith is sin in the choices we make. How do you make your choices? Do you make because it is convenient, it is good for you, or do you make because of faith? And for Moses, he has demonstrated for us the choices he made is made by faith. And today we come right to verse 30. And verse 30 to 40, there are 11 verses. It's often skipped, so I, I want you to get used to it. So I'm going to get you to read with me. Ken? Only 11 verses. All right, as you read it, make some observation along the way. Okay, ready? One, two, three. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircling for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish along with those who were disobedient after he had welcomed the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the, fire, the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release as that, so that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mocking, scourging, and also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in desert and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. And all this, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised 
because God has promised something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. May the Lord bless the public reading of His Word. Now, we will revisit these 11 verses along the way. But before I jump further, I'd like to share with you about faith. Because there are two extremes of living by faith. One extreme is faithless, dare not live by faith. I already talk about young Christian who, who tends to live by what is visible, by living by the self-effort to try to do things our way. Dare not live by faith. But the truth is this, we don't have all the answer from what is visible in life, right? We need more than what is visible. And that's why we need to learn to live by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then the other extreme, the other extreme is presumptuous faith. Presumptuous faith is simply believe that just because you have faith, everything must go your way. But that's not true. Because the truth is, our confidence should be in God and not in faith alone. All right? God is the object of our faith. Don't put your confidence in the size of your faith. And because of that, to help us to understand better, I frame this whole sermon as understanding the paradox of faith. How do, uh, what is paradox? Paradox is a concept that seems self-contradictory contradictory, and yet possess an underlining truth. Okay, how can we see this paradox of faith? Or how can we see faith? We can see faith in unexpected people. We can see faith in unexpected situations. And finally, we can see faith in unexpected outcomes. I'm going to unpack them one at a time for you. You see, we, we, we expect faith to be associated with certain people in certain situations with certain outcomes. Just like how I started the sermon by sharing with you that some of us think that the certain type of people will make it to heaven because we have a certain association of what required, what's required or how faith looks like. Even for most part of chapter 11, we can see all the usual suspects of faith, of people living by faith, like Enoch, Noah, uh, Abel. All right? And then of course, in verse 32, it tells us about King David, Samuel, and the prophets. All these are people we expected, right? We expected them to be men and women of faith. Expected, right? Now, are you ready for the unexpected? Rahab. Rahab. Why is Rahab mentioned? Now, the book of Hebrews is written for who? Who is the original reader of the book of Hebrews? The title is Hebrews, right? So the original readers will be the Jewish people. And who is Rahab? Gentiles. And, and, and in, 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 the, in that time, in that season, all right, a woman. Why would they want to listen to a woman? But yet, in chapter 11, Rahab is placed right in there. And what do you know about Rahab? What, was, what makes Rahab famous? She told a lie. All right? Because when the people came to her and said, where are the two spies? And she said, oh, they went that way. When in reality, she hid the two spies upstairs. Until today, today we are still talking about, can we tell a lie or not? Lah? Like Rahab. So that's what Rahab is known for. A woman that told a lie. Now what about Gideon? Now, what, 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 what do you know about Gideon? Now, Gideon is the very typical Singaporean. When God called Gideon, what did Gideon ask? God, if you really call me, uh, I put out the flea of wool, okay? Then there must be, it must become wet and then the surrounding area must become dry. And when God answered him, what did he do? Bosang, bosang, no cow, no cow. One more time. This time, uh, the wool must be dry, outside must be wet. Or is it that way around? Okay. But you get the picture, right? So when, he, when God spoke to him, he must ask for double confirmation. Like very much Singaporean, isn't it? That whenever God calls us, we need to say, God, can you say that one more time? Say it again. Better still ask Pastor Daniel Fu and tell me. 
So why, why would Rahab and Gideon be placed as people of faith? Unexpected. But are you ready for the ultimate? All right? People that totally not expected, totally unexpected. Barak, Samson, and Jephthah. How many of you know Barak? Oh, one small hand there. <laughs> the rest of you, have you heard of this name before? I'm not talking about Barack Obama. Huh? Have you heard of this character, Barack? Right? Most of us wouldn't even know where to find him. I put a reference there for you, all right? In Judges chapter 4, the, the judge, Deborah, called Barak and says that, Barak, I want you to take the army of God, go and fight and, and deliver the people of God. And what did Barak say? Barak said that, cannot lie, you want me to go, you must go with me. Right, Barak insists that the judge must go with him. And because he makes that request, Deborah makes the, the judgment that I will go with you, but the honour of killing the enemy will not be yours. Right, the, the, the enemy was eventually killed by another woman. That's Barak for you. What about Sansom? What do you know about Sansom? When you see the word Sansom, what comes to your mind straight away? Huh? Delilah straight away. <laughs> All right, you, you think about immoral, right? You think about him being a horrible guy, right? Uh, someone that, that lives an immoral life, someone with no regards for the word of God. Eventually, he caved in to this woman called Delilah. And because he caved in to this woman, he was blinded, he was tortured by the enemy. And then finally, he died. But because at the final moment, he cried out to God, God used his death to deliver the people of God. That's Samson for you. What about Jephthah? Have you heard of this name before? You know, in the Jewish community, they always say that don't be a Jephthah. You know why? Because he went to battle and said that God, if, if I um, help me, if you help me to win this battle, all right, when I go back home, the first creature, the first person that come forward, I will sacrifice this person to the Lord. Maybe he was thinking that the first creature that come out will be the dog. Uh, huh? The dog will come home and welcome him, right? But he said, who came out? His daughter. Uh, his daughter. So he ended up, he had to sacrifice his daughter. And, and then that was something that um, many of the Jews were just saying that don't be another Jephthah, don't make vow like this. Question, why would this three person name in this whole list a man of faith or woman of faith? What was God trying to teach us? You know, the, the writer of Hebrew can name many people, but why pick up these people? What, what is the main lesson here? I'd like to submit to you, the main lesson here is to show us this. God can use unexpected common folks to show that faith is for everyone. That every one of us can live by faith. Can I hear amen? Every one of us, if you feel like you're ordinary, you're imperfect, you qualify. You can live by faith. Let me quickly share with you this. Rahab is known for her lies. Gideon is known for, her, for his cynicism. Barak is known for his fear. Sansom is known for his weakness. Jephthah is known for his foolishness. And yet, God can use them all when they put their faith in God. Ordinary folks, imperfect people, just like you and I, it's never the size of our faith. It's the size of our God that matters. You may have a bad name, like Rahab or Sansom. Or you may be unknown, like Barak. Or you're feeling tired, like Gideon. God can still use you. God can still use you. I've heard of how God used ordinary people to pray for others, to be a channel of God's healing and share the gospel. Do you know about this movement? Call, can I pray for you? <laughs> God used ordinary bibitition to do the extraordinary work when we allow ourselves to exercise our faith, to trust that God can use us. God will use you. Amen? And so don't delay. After the service, please go downstairs and sign up for the ministry. Amen? All right, avail yourself. Right? It is never about the greatness of our faith, 
but the greatness of our God that truly matters. It's just like doing skydiving, like jumping off the plane with the parachute. It doesn't matter whether you do it confidently or you do it scared, cowardly. What's most important? That the parachute open up, right? <laughs> Same with our faith in God. And when, God, when Jesus said that, if you have faith as big as the master seed, what was God emphasizing? What was Jesus emphasizing? That if you have faith as big as the master seed, he wasn't emphasizing about the big seed, you know. He was emphasizing about the big God. That when, you, when, you, when your focus is on God, even if your, your faith is so small, but because your God is so big, He can do wonders through us. All right? Ordinary faith from unexpected people placed in the great God will achieve great outcome. Let me repeat that again. Ordinary faith from unexpected people place in a great God will achieve great outcome. That's a paradox of faith. Right? We can see faith in unexpected people. And not only that we can see faith in unexpected people, we can see faith in unexpected situations. All right? Can I get you to read this again? All right? Just a few lines just to get you to see what is that. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Who by faith conquered kingdoms, perform acts of righteousness, obtain promises, shut the mouths of lions, quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection. What kind of situation are this? Wonderful situation, isn't it? Positive outcome. Don't you want to have this kind of outcome? Yes, no, don't know. Can you all try to respond to me, please? I, I need a bit of responses. Are these good happening? Are these good outcomes? Great outcomes, right? But I want to suggest to you, this is in hindsight. It is after the fact. You see, in order for these 10 outcomes to happen, right? What must happen first? What must happen before you conquer kingdoms? You must. You must face the fight to conquer kingdom, right? What must, what must happen before you can perform acts of righteousness? You must face the challenges to righteousness. All right? How can you obtain promises? You must learn to wait for the promises to be given. All right? How do you shut the mouth of lions? You must face... You must face lions. How, how do you quench the, fire, the power of fire? You must face the fire. How do you escape the edge of the sword? You must face the sword. You get the idea? You need to face unexpected situations such as trials, difficulties, period of darkness first before you can experience deliverance. Dark days are opportunities, not obstacles for your faith expression. Let me repeat that for all of us. Dark days, dark times are opportunities, not obstacles for your faith expression. When you put your faith in this kind of situation in God's hand, you allow Him to change your destiny. When you face challenges, when you face difficulties, this is the time when you need to release, you need to have faith in God so that God can change the destiny for you. God is able to turn unexpected situations for good. We need to trust Him. God used unexpected situations to bring His blessing, but we must learn to trust Him. You see, trust God is an expression of faith in who He is. He is always with us and He knows our need. What's a human tendency when you face unexpected situation? What's a human tendency? Our human tendency is to rush. And we want to rush. But really, there's no point in rushing to join into the gem of life. 
just like it reminded me of national service. We always told about national service, we must hurry up and wait for our high HQ to give us instruction. All right? Yeah, for those of us who serve national service, we, we are always made by the sergeant to wake up early and hurry, hurry, hurry. And after that, you wait for hours. Sometimes we, we try to rush to solve the unsolvable problems. You see, the secret in life is not speed. The secret in life is the saviour. It's not about the how, it's about the who is with you. God is with us, even in our darkness. Don't be afraid of dark times, dark periods of your life, because God can use the darkness if you place your faith in Him. The people in verse 33 to 35, they did that. They demonstrated faith in unexpected situations. There was a young mother who had a very difficult first pregnancy when she was diagnosed with lupus at 26 weeks of pregnancy. The fluid within the womb was not enough for the baby. There were several moments that threatened the life of both the mother and the child. Unexpected situation. But I remember how Pastor Daniel Fu led the church to pray. Can't remember, right? right? He led the church to pray, declaring that this pregnancy will be well on the basis of God's Word. I was in that service. I remember I was sitting there. I was very moved by the expression of faith. To believe God even in unexpected situations. That little boy, the little baby was born prematurely but healthily. Today, Ethan is already 11 years old and Pastor Furley is a happy mother of four boys. All right? Ethan is that little boy wearing glasses. All right? Unexpected situation. You can still trust God and see God deliver us. You can see faith at work in unexpected people, ordinary people like you and I. All right? If we dare to trust God, God can use us. We can see faith in unexpected situations, situations that we don't like, situations that we avoid. But when it comes to us, if you dare to trust God, God can change our destiny. If you dare to trust God. And finally, we come to the unexpected outcome. Are you ready to read with me? Ready? One, two, three. And others were tortured, not accepting their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. Some faced jails and floggings and some even change and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. What kind of examples are these? We, we just read 10 positive happenings, right? Now you have 10 negative happenings. And this is where you have perplexity of faith. Where, we, where they did not receive the outcome they hoped for. These are the 10 negative outcomes. Just now we read about the 10 positive, now these are the 10 negative outcomes, unexpected outcomes. What if God call us to wait? How do you feel when God call you to wait? You're very, can't wait, right? Very uncomfortable, isn't it? But what if God tells you the answer is no? Will you still trust God? Will you still believe that God is good when the answer He gave you is no. It is presumptuous to think that good things are bound to happen with faith. But we need to address this commonly held belief that with faith, everything good will happen. Not in these last 10 cases. Nothing good on earth happened. It is presumptuous faith to think that with faith, all good things will, happen, will sure to happen to us the way we wanted it. It is God alone who makes things happen, not our faith. Don't put your faith in faith. Put your faith in 
God. How should we respond in this situation where unexpected outcomes, the outcomes that you don't want, like such as unanswered prayer, how should we respond? Let me give you three more sub-points. Then we can, I can preach all the way to 7 o'clock, okay? How, how should we handle, how should we respond to unanswered prayers? I'd like to share with you there are three things that will help us from the text how we can manage unanswered prayer or unexpected outcomes. Outcomes that we don't like. What can we do? Three things. First, trust in God's timing. Verse 40 tells us, God has planned something better for us so that together, only together with us will they be made perfect. All right, so God will answer, but God will answer when? At a better timing, together with us. So God has a timing before He, he delivers the people of old. All right, he has a timing. So God will provide something better in His timing. Ecclesiastes 3, 11 tells us the same, that God will do something better at his time. Reminds me of the song. Do you remember the song? In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day as you teach me your way that you do just what you say in your time. I find a lot of comfort in this song because there are many seasons in our lives that we need to be reminded again that God will make all things beautiful in His time. So first thing, when you pray and you don't receive what you ask for, trust God that God will answer us in His time. The second thing that can help us when we go through an answer prayer, we go through the outcome that we don't want, and that's we must trust that God will always give us the best. God does not want to give us the good. God wants us to give us the best. God has the best for us. All right? Now, how do we see that? We see that in verse 35. He said that God will give them a better resurrection. He tells us in verse 40, God has provided something better. He is a good father who will not withhold good and perfect gifts from us who walk uprightly. All right, Psalms 84 tells us this, that if we walk uprightly, God will not withhold good and perfect gifts from us. So when we don't receive our prayer requests, when we, our prayer requests are not responded, trust that our Father God has something better. Many years ago, someone came to me and she was very upset. She blamed God for allowing her ex-boyfriend to leave her. Because when, when, when they broke up, it was an unexpected outcome. And she was very angry with God. Today, she was glad. Because she had found someone better. Why? Because God wants to give us the best. So first thing is that when, when, when you don't have your answer, when you, have, when you don't have your answer for your prayer, the first thing is that trust in God's timing. Second, trust that God will give us the best. And the third thing that will help us is to trust in God's ultimate victory. God's ultimate. What's the ultimate victory of God for our lives? that we together with all the saints will be approved by God and that we will be complete one day. Now what does that mean? Look at verse 38. Verse 38 tells us that the world was not worthy of them. God thought highly of them. Those who believe in God, even when they did not receive what was promised on earth. All right? They did not receive, but they still believe. And God said that these are the men the world is not worthy of. What a high accolades. They deserve a better world. They deserve heaven. Verse 39 tells us, they were all commended for their faith. And our translation tells us, they gained the approval of God, which is far more important than getting what we want. Because you can get what you want and you're not approved by God. But they have got, they have the best. They receive the approval of God that far outweighs everything else on earth. Now, verse 40 is very interesting. Verse 40 tells us they will make perfect. They'll be together with us. Verse 40 says this, Since God has planned something better for us, 
so that only together with us will they be made perfect. Question, who are the us? Who are the us? All of us here, lah. All right, those of us who are, we are inheritors of the faith, all right, we, we, we are the us. Tell the person beside you, you are the us. <laughs> Not the, the other us, right? but. <laughs> now then the question is, who are the they? So that together with us, they would be made perfect. Who are the they? Who are the they? Remember I shared with you, I'm doing Bible study. Yes, who are the they? The they are referring to the saints that have already passed on. The saints that have already died. Alright? So what are they doing now? Those who, are, have died, those who are dead in Christ, what are they doing right now? They're all waiting for us, no? <laughs> right, you must come back next week, we talk about the cloud of witnesses. They're all waiting for us. Don't sabo us, okay? We are waiting for you. Why? Because they will not be made complete until we finish our race. And this is the comfort that I give to all when I conduct funerals. Because sometimes Christians ask me, how can I be so sure that I will see my loved one again? The Bible tells us they're all waiting for us, what? Right? All our loved ones who are believers, we will see them again. Can I hear amen? Alright, why? Because the Bible tells us in verse 40, God has planned something better for us so that together with us, will they be made perfect. They are waiting for all of us so that together with us, they will be made perfect. Now what does the word perfect means? It means that we will be made complete with a new body in the new heaven and a new earth. This is our ultimate victory. Don't live for the world here. Live for the world to come. And we will be declared victorious. We'll be declared approved if we have faith here today. Where is your faith? When you're not getting what you prayed for, our encouragement to you is to trust in God's timing, to trust that God will give you the best, and to trust in the ultimate victory that's ours in the heaven to come. Where is your faith today? Our weak faith, our weak faith placed in a powerful God is placed in the right place. I repeat that again. Our weak faith. You can say, Pastor, my faith is very weak. My faith is very small. When we put that very small faith in the right God, you are placed in the right place. Let me end with a final story. A dear friend of mine lost his wife to cancer. He prayed earnestly for her healing, but it was not answered. And he went into a deep period of grief and yet in his grief, he was drawn to this unchanging God. And the assurance of God was, his wife is now in the cloud of weaknesses waiting for him. He was deeply comforted that he will see his wife again. In fact, God gave him a glimpse of the cloud of weaknesses. That he saw through the cloud of weaknesses, he saw Moses, he saw all the saints. And suddenly, he saw that familiar face, his wife. Today, my friend has moved on happy, knowing that one day he will see his beloved wife again. Such is our blessed hope where we have faith in God. He quoted Bill Johnson. Uh, Bill Johnson, he said this, the backslider in heart will always judge God by what he didn't do. But those who run with tenderness for who he is will always define him by what he said by what He promised, by what He has done. This is the definition of faith. Dilun continues to say this, I've determined that I'll be the one who runs with tenderness towards God. I will not be someone who only trusts in God when the times are good and everything is going my way. But especially through times of darkness where we are going through the valley of the shadow of death. We need even more to turn to God. Church, this is a paradox of faith. That we need to believe even more when we don't see. We can see faith in unexpected people, ordinary people like us. We can see faith in unexpected situations, 
even like dark periods of your life. We can see faith even in unexpected outcomes when our prayers are not answered. We can all live by faith. Why? Because we serve a faithful God. Because God is faithful. Can I invite all of us to close our eyes and look to God together? Because the faithful God is here. He said that when we come together, He is among us. Allow the Word of God to bring comfort to many hearts here tonight. Especially for some of us who have lost, lost our loved one or have lost something in your life. Today the Lord is here. The Lord wants to comfort us. want to comfort you. To know that this Word is for you today. You can trust God. We can trust God. Because He is faithful. Holy Spirit, may you encourage your sons and daughters here tonight. Help us to know that, Lord, that you have never left us alone. You are always with us. You are here today. In Jesus' name. Church, can I invite all of us to stand? We're going to end this time with this closing song. I speak Jesus. We've decided on this closing song because we need faith. We need faith to speak Jesus over the situation of our lives. Don't focus on the challenges. Don't focus on the dark times. Focus on God who is here. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Your name Your name is power your name is sealing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, it shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Let's break on this service. I feel the Lord wants to comfort those of us who have lost your loved one recently. The Lord wants you to know He's here. He's here. Right? And so as we worship the Lord with this song again, I want to encourage those of you, if you have lost your loved one and you are still grieving, why don't you come and allow us to pray with you? And there are some of us, there are some prayers that have not been answered and you'll be very discouraged with God. How about coming forward and allow us to pray with you? And there may be some of us here who have never given your life to Jesus. Today you hear this sermon about faith and something is stirring your heart. Why don't you come to Jesus as well? So as Joel leads us, facilitate this song again. I want to encourage you, those of you who are hurting, come and allow us to pray with you. Alright, because that's what the church is for, to be a house of prayer. So as we continue to worship the Lord, if you are in pain or you, have, you want to give your life to Jesus, just come. Allow us to pray with you. Come. We are a church I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Don't stay where you are, God knows you are hurting, come Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Speak the name of Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is soul and there is freedom I speak Jesus Let's proclaim this Your name is power Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows And burn like a fire Oh, your name Your name is power Your name is fear
soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus I speak the name of Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus hey, Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Yes, you are Lord You break every stronghold You shine through the shadows Burn Over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the time is over For my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. service so close you come allow us to pray for you for the healing of God allow me to read out some word of knowledge if this word of knowledge means something to you you come God is here I want to speak the name of Jesus over you so someone who is anxious about an upcoming brain surgery someone who is in a relationship but you struggle to fully love and trust your partner there's a picture of a road sign someone is feeling lost and you need guidance someone has a heart condition come for prayer Someone you feel pain between your first and your second toe. Someone has an ache on your right hip. Now, if this word means something to you, and if you're watching from home, join us as our Breakthrough House Zoom. But you're on site, come and allow us to pray for you. We're going to speak Jesus over those of us who are hurting. Let me bring this service to a close. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you will confirm the word of God. And we pray this day that even as we unpack your Holy Scripture, Lord, come and minister to your sons and daughters. For those who need to respond to the word of knowledge, or for those who are struggling with the loss in their life, who need a special touch of healing, may they experience your healing here today. Now, Lord, may the love of our Father God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with us as we leave this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The service is over.